interesting conversation that we're going to have because as somebody in the funeral business, you actually know a hell of a lot about organ donors and apparently we're pretty shy on them. We are. The statistics from last year, it looks like there was only 46 organ donors in New Zealand and the suggestion is that the reason is the public have the veto or the family have the veto against the person's request. So I mean for example on my driver's license I've got a donor and I'm not quite sure whether they want my liver, but they could also they could always take some other bits that are still working well. And, and, and literally the family can say no. Yes, and once the family say no, that's it's the subject's closed. I guess the other thing, Craig, is that no one's going to look at my license until, until afterwards. No one's going to read my will until it's too late. So how do we, if I'm really wanting to be a, a, a donor, how do I do it? How do I go about it? It really needs to be documented and made aware to family members, which would bring us back to why we suggest families, uh, older ones, do a pre-arrangement so that they have documented down their wishes and thoughts concerning their funeral and family have a copy of that or know about the copy and then it's there in black and white when that reality comes. So this is a pre-arrangement, this is a form that funeral directors use throughout the country and it's signed by the person. Mm -hmm. And it's a very useful document in the sense that it outlines the person's desire for their funeral but for us as funeral directors it's often the document that we can use to bring family back to neutral ground. And why that happens is often in a, uh, when someone passes away, it's the first time for maybe many years that all the family have come together and individuals are facing many emotional stresses and thoughts that they didn't realize, either with the reality of the one that's died or even within the family. And we end up with this thought and that thought being aired and one person wants it done this way and another person wants it done that way. So we use that pre-arrangement as something neutral and it's from the person that's passed away which brings respect mm. to those in the family and we can usually bring that in as the middle ground and get everyone together with that document. I guess also there's a case, Craig, where you know, members of the family are going to say we don't want we don't want granddad or grandmother or mother or dad sort of mutilated because they, they don't want that to happen in their minds, but it's not really the case. Not, not at all. Um, the, to me, the most important thing is respecting the wishes and thoughts of the person that's passed away or cho choosing to be an organ donor. They've made that decision consciously and feel that it is something that can be uh, utilised if it's an organ donor we're speaking about to help save someone else. Now I know of one situation where a young person passed away and he is the result today of nine people still living as a result what of his a, organ donors. What a lovely thing to leave behind. Mm -hmm. You said young, now I guess that somebody in their 90s it's probably, you know, their body, with all due respect, is worn out. So it's the younger people who should really be doing this? Absolutely. And even if you choose to be an organ donor and family are supportive of you, there is definite medical criteria that's looked at before organs can be used to benefit someone else. Now, serious question, if, if, if I, for example, were to do a pre-arrangement with you, for example, now all my children and everyone in the family live in Australia. How would they know that I'd done a pre-arrangement with you? We would suggest to family that they verbally tell the children that this is what I've done. Uh, you yourself, Rob, would keep a copy of that and then the funeral home keeps a copy of it also. And I'd put it in my safe at home. That's the first place they're going to go to. Absolutely. <laughs> How much money did the old man have <laughs> stashed away in there? Absolutely. <laughs> And oftentimes when we go to meet with family, we take those documents with us and have the written copy there 
and it can be referred to and looked at if family haven't seen it. Do you update those? I mean, people update their wills every couple of years. We do. Every 12 months, we do our best to go through the pre-arrangements that we have and touch base with people in case they do want to make changes. And on that pre-arrangement, I mean, I, I would be telling you what music I wanted and even down to pallbearers if... Absolutely. The, perhaps the most important information is the information that relates to the recording of the death certificate and there's a lot of details on there that children might not even be sure of. For example, mm. the names of your mother and your father. Uh, oftentimes when you start speaking to children, they say, we only knew her as Nana. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's, no help at all, that's not it? too helpful. <laughs> so recording that information takes a lot of stress out of the, the story for family. And then the second part of it is recording what you have in mind regarding your funeral service whether you want cremation or burial. Mm. And again, that's often an area that can create dispute or tension in a family. Well, you actually go further back, don't you? I mean, with my parents, I had to go with, to their parents and what they would had done Abs and where they yeah, were born. Absolutely. And often children don't know the full name of their grandparents. Or they, where they were married. And Why do you have to have all that information? Statistical reasons only. Really? for the government to be able to collect statistics of those kind of things and have a record that people can draw on later. So if, if you don't know, because my children would have no idea about, you know, I had, I had a stepfather because my father passed away in mm -hmm. 1955. How are they, you know, what happens if they literally don't know? If families cannot uh, gather the information, it, it is, is illegally allowed to be put through as not recorded or not known. Yeah, okay. But it, it's normally it is. Mm -hmm. Most families manage somehow to find it. Mm -hmm.